Okay, so in this video, I will show you how we can populate one to many relationship or one to one relationship with Factory Boy and Django RM. So I will show you a couple of ways. Um, you can select the one that you like. Uh, I will stick with at the end with, uh, in my opinion, the best uh, thing in our case. So first thing, we will be working with the user and the post uh, model models. So we have the factories for the user. Let's see, create a factories for the post. And the first thing I'm gonna show you, you might need this in your project, is uh, each time we create a post, or before we create a post, we will create a user, create the post, assign this post to this newly created user. So I'm gonna show you this first. So let's actually uh, create a class here called um, post factory so class post factory this should extend from factory dot django import django model factory okay if you are using different orm you will import that i think they have a sql alchemy and uh, maybe something more i'm not sure but yeah if you now we need to actually look at our model we have the body user categories we will look into the categories later in a different video now we'll be focusing on body and user. Body should be simple, it's just a string. So faker, and I will give it paragraph. I'm just gonna copy paste this, this word. So from factory dot faker, import faker, like this. Now, so just like I said, each time we create a post, or before we create a post, sorry, we will create a user, assign that user ID to this newly created post. To do this, we will use something called subfactory. So I'm from factory import subfactory. Uh, you might don't want to import stuff like this, so you can just do import factory, and yeah, you can just type factory dot Django and dot Django model field. Uh, it's really, it's really fine, I guess. But anyway. So we can do the following. So sub factory, and this will say each time you create a model that uh, represents this post factory and try to save it in the database, resolve these first. This is what uh, this means. It's sort of like reverse foreign key. I think this is what the docs actually says. Uh, said um, it's somewhere I guess here or here. Sorry, it's like a reverse foreign key. Yeah. So here they have an example with uh, like a user and something called the group. So each time you create a user, they will create a group. And yeah, reverse foreign key. So I'm showing you this, uh, which each time I'm creating a post, I will create a user, then assign that user ID to the post. I will show you the other way around. Each time we create a user, I will create maybe 10 or randomly from one to five posts. I will show you both things. So here, for this sub-factory class, you need to give it uh, the factory for this property, which, by the way, this property exists in the model. As you can see, these should be the same names, okay? Keep that in mind. So here you have two options. First one, which I don't like, you will go to the user, factories, import, fa user factory, and just pass it. So at some point, this could lead to circular dependencies, which Python does not love. So what you can do to fix this, or an option to fix this, so let me actually turn it and just comment this out, is to give it a string that points to this class. So user, the app user, now factories, I'm gonna just copy paste the name, then user factory. And this will actually, behind the scenes, resolve the user factory. Each, in my opinion, each time you have the chance to just pass a string, and the framework behind the scene will resolve these dependencies. It's always uh, better, in my opinion. It will save you a lot of trouble at some point. Now, the class meta, just like we did in the user factory, should point to the post model. You have the same idea. You either import the post model, like this, or I'm gonna, I will not do this. I will just give it, hey, go to the post app, then go to the post model. And by default, this equivalent to this. But since we usually have the models file, you can actually do this and it will understand. So let's actually test this. So let's go to the seed file. 
by the way you can click shift sorry uh, control p or command p and type the name of the file this is called the fuzzy file finder if you want to google it there is a lot of uh, tricks you can do here and it exists in PyCharm. if you are using that just type double shift or press double shift it will open something similar so go to see it and this actually import from post now post dot sorry dot now factories then post factory so let's add it here but uh, I made actually a mistake in the previous video this options dictionary always have the amount key so get will check actually for existence if the if this key exists I will retain the value for that key and by default the value is none so this command 10 does not make sense this will fail uh, I will prove I will prove it so I can type py by the way this is an alias um, or just type python if that did not work so just see it give it without an argument it will fail because none type object cannot be interpreted as an integer this will return none so to fix this I think you got this uh, but yeah just do this so this should fix uh, this one now remember the post factory will actually generate or create a user instance so I can just remove this and by the way another cool thing I don't need this for loop we can have bulk create so just do I think yeah create batch and give it the size so 10 or sorry the amount right I think this is uh, much readable or I think it's much better and if if I'm not mistaken this will create uh, all of these at once and store them in the database so it will be maybe a single query which is very nice but I did not check e even though I like the syntax even uh, better uh, more than the for loop anyway so let's actually now see it and if you don't give an argument that by default it will be 10 so we should see 10 posts and that's another issue user match in query does not exist if you clear the database which I do in uh, almost in the start of each video but I don't actually record it but I cleared the whole database uh, now if you go to the user factory as you can see uh, if you go to the user factory we are for each username we are selecting the latest ID but this will fail if you if this like query did not get anything from that from the database this will fail this is why we get uh, model does user dot models does not exist so let's actually handle that so try try doing this if this fails uh, so expect if this fail with user does not exist just return f string with user zero so this means we don't have users this is the first one maybe you face this when you uh, if you were typing with me but this is uh, the simplest fix so now let's try it again this should work no errors so let's actually go to the tables let's, let's see the users we have 10 users and we have 10 posts 20 20 posts maybe because I did not create this it's actually let's actually move these two and try again um, where am I? yeah here yeah 10 posts and 10 users yeah again for each post we create before we create it we will create we will reserve these and then assign the ID for the post uh, mode and then store it so this is one way um, yeah this is one way another way is to actually let me just open the code so I don't mess things up um, we will leave this like this another way is to come to the fact to the user factory and here each time we create a user go create maybe one to five posts uh, for this user I think this is the thing that we actually want in this case so you can call this anything you want I will call it posts posts and first thing I'm gonna show you a method called related factory or a class so I'm gonna import a bunch of things here you can use this syntax to do this I'll move this up 
Now, the first one is called related factory, and the second one, related factory list. This is for creating money. This is for creating uh, a single record. I will use. I will show you this first. So, put it here, and you need to pass to it some stuff. First thing is the name. The name of the factory you are gonna use. So, go to the post app. Then don't dot factories, right? Then post factory. Did I type it right? Yeah. So use this factory, and the name of the field should match the name of the model or the name of the field you are trying to populate, which is user. And we get this from the model. We are trying to populate the user, which behind the scenes in Django will convert to user underscore ID. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, maybe hard to understand or follow, but yeah, that's it. So this is the name of the field. Um, this should be it. And by the way, if your model accepts like some kind of arguments, you can just pass them here. So let's say, for example, it accepts. Uh, I mean, if it's if it accepts something that the factory does not generate, you can pass here. So let's say uh, something hard coded high. So let's say each post have a property called high or a column called high in the database. It's always one. This will work. Uh, but yeah, I'll just stick with this and now let's go to the seed i will remove this and just generate users let me clear the database save and we clear the posts by the way if you are wondering why the posts are not deleted this is because i'm using sqlite and this feature the cascade is or checking the following keys is disabled by default uh, when we switch to postgres this should work so generate that's nice. So now we have, we should have 10 users and for each user, so we have from ID 95 to 104, we should see 10 posts and the user ID is from 95 uh, to 104, right? Yeah, the same thing. So for each user, generate one post. Now we need to do the other thing. For each post, for each user, generate multiple posts, maybe, maybe random posts, right? Maybe from one to five, something like this. So it's actually really simple as well. So factory list, I'm gonna comment this out for your reference, uh, if you wanna see it. I'm gonna use the factory list here. The same idea here, uh, this is also the same, but you need to give it a size argument. So I'm gonna add multiple lines here. So size, this will be a lambda function. And uh, it will, by default, lambda functions retain what they have. Oh, well, yeah, they just retain the expression that um, you typed here after evaluating it. So I'm going to import from the built-in package in Python, so import random. I mean, usually the docs just do this, but you can do from random, import, and end. Uh, I think both things are fine. So rand int from 1 to 5. So each time you generate a post, uh, sorry, each time you create a user, generate randomly from one to five posts and assign them to this user. Very nice. So let's actually remove this just to have a clear start and remove the users as well. Okay. Oops, can you, you can see, right? Okay, I, I hope this is not uh, that small, but yeah, I think you got the idea. Let's now actually create, I would, maybe after this I will increase the size. So a seed. Let's actually look at the users. This should be only 10. Let me increase actually the font so you can see. Uh, yeah, like this. So these are 10. Now let's go to the post. Post table, yeah. You should see we have actually 23. Yeah, we have 23. And these are the IDs. As you can see, some users have two. This one have two, this one have three, this one have two, three, one, two. So yeah, you can actually customize it as much as you like. But I think in our case, this is fine. The only thing you might need to do is maybe, maybe you can increase these. Maybe you can pass a custom amount, so maybe 100. But I think for now, this will do it. This is a way to populate one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. If you remember, this will be one to one like this. I think you noticed that this will be one to many. And uh, yeah, 
this is it. In the next video, we will be going through many to many and how we can do th that with Factory Boy. And uh, maybe after that, we can actually maybe create some endpoints, maybe on the front end. I'm not quite sure yet. But uh, yeah, I will try in this series to focus a lot on the Django RM and how to create complex queries without like uh, without making the performance bad. But uh, yeah, this will be it for this video and uh, I hope you found it useful. Bye. Oops, you can't see this, right? Yeah, I hope I did not cover anything uh, important, but yeah, bye.